Hi guys, welcome to Snakes and Adders. This is episode 47 of our Introducing series. Today we're going to be looking at this wonderful little colubrid from Central America and Southern North America. And it is the Transpecos rat snake, Bogotophis subocularis. This is a criminally underrated rat snake from southwestern USA and northern Central America, Mexico. Arguably, this is one of the most attractive of the New World rat snakes. Just look at it, it's amazing. Absolutely gorgeous, aren't you? Elegant in build, yet deceptively strong. This snake is lighter built than the North American rat snakes of the genus Pantherophis, such as the black rat snake Pantherophis obsoletus or Pantherophis spoloides. The head is more defined and the eyes are larger, giving it a slightly bug-eyed expression. Because of the exposed regions in which they originate, this snake is more specialised for nocturnal activity. This species belongs to the genus Bogotophis, which it shares with the Baja California rat snake, Bogotophis rosalie. Bogotophis was named in honour of Charles Mitchell Bogert, uh, an American herpetologist. The binomial name of the species is Bogotophis subocularis, and the name is in reference to the presence of tiny scales underneath the ocular scales and above the labial lip scales, and these are called suboculars, hence the name subocularis. First described in 1901 by Arthur Brown, Dowling and Price were the first to place the two species into Bogotophis in 1988, so a relatively new definition. Distribution of the Transpecos rat snake begins in southern New Mexico and southwestern Texas and tracks through the Chihuahua uh, desert uh, to through Chihuahua, Coahuila, uh, Durango and Nuevo Leon. The distribution is remarkably similar to the grey banded king snake, which we covered in the last episode. They occupy the Chihuahua Desert primarily, found between the Sierra Madre Orientalis in the east and Sierra Madre Occidentalis to the west. The region is um, deeply variable in altitude and the species is listed as having a wide elevation range from 450 to 1600 metres above sea level. Regardless of this, the searing daytime heat will be shunned by the species, which will seek to shelter and come out at night. This behaviour may oscillate throughout the year, depending on the temperatures encountered. In spring and autumn, the species may become more crepuscular in habit, meaning it's out during dawn and dusk. And in winter, it could be diurnal, although in certain areas of its region, depending on elevation, it will almost certainly have to brumate for a period of time. The late onset uh, of winter in the Chihuahua region results in brumation between December and May. This results in delays all round when we consider the other species of rat snake from genus Pantherophis. Um, and breeding season will not hit full swing until June or July, a full three or four months after the Pantherophis. Egg laying in August to September and after a two month incubation, hatching will occur from October to November. It is therefore natural for relatively newborn snakes that have only had a chance to collect a small amount of prey to have to seek shelter for the winter period, having consumed perilously few meals. This speaks to the resilience we come to so closely to associate with the rat snakes of the Americas. In captivity, this species is woefully underrepresented, particularly in the UK. The advent of further colour mutations on top of the naturally occurring blonde phase, of which this is an example, um, have helped bolster this. The silver phase is a personal favourite. I absolutely love them. Um, in normal form, the species is saddled with long sort of H-shaped blotches, whereas on the blonde, it tends to form loosely formed, slightly darker diamonds moving down the back. And the diamonds in their biggest form generally have a light centre similar to the base colour, which is a beautiful fresh straw yellow. Um, these snakes are for the most part a pleasure 
to maintain in captivity. They represent few real issues. The ones that generally occur are centered around starting babies off feeding. As discussed, their year runs somewhat behind everybody else that we associate with general colubrid care. Uh, and we may well find that breeders have to brumate them as babies prior to um, selling them on because they just simply won't establish otherwise. And this will help kick them in the following spring. This can then give the impression of being very small for their age when they do become available, effectively being from the season previous, but having slept essentially on an empty stomach for two or three months. This is a CB18 animal. And compared to its North American cousins in the genus Pantherophis would be considered tiny. But when we consider this as part of their natural life cycle, it makes perfect sense. This is a shyer snake than the northern cousins. And whilst for the most part it is tame, occasional bouts of striking or tail rattling with the youngsters may occur. This is never out of aggression, but simply fear. This is quite a, um, a reclusive snake shy delicate these are words that you keep reminding yourself of uh you could i mean a snake over time will learn to trust you and you'll be able to handle it as we are here and we're, we're working with it and we're not getting any particular forms of aggression but it's not a snake that i could handle as incessantly as say a corn snake or gray rat snake um, and the risk is that if we overhandle it and create stress this could manifest itself with abstaining from food because of this shy nature, they seem to benefit from quiet surroundings for raising them. And this is one of the few times that you'll hear me sort of say, I'd probably recommend raising a youngster in a tub where it's quiet, subdued, dark and quiet. And they're more likely to feed and grow on appropriately. Once the animal is established, say from two and a half to three feet onwards, I suppose this guy's nearly at that stage now. He's certainly approaching it. They would be transitioned to a vivarium with a multitude of hiding opportunities. Generally, um, Feeding settles down, does not continue to be an issue once a balance is established regarding the level of interaction a keeper has with their snake. An adult vivarium should measure around 120 by 60 by 60 centimetres. Some keepers may want to go larger. Rudimentary heating can be provided by a heat pad and a thermostat, but much more preferential would be transitioning to a ceramic heat emitter or a deep heat projector, although you may need a couple of those to run the tank properly. And these would be coupled to uh, reliable dimming or pulse thermostats, uh, and the stat should have a day-night function. Daytime basking temperatures should be around 31 degrees at the basking spot, with the opportunity to retire away from this heat, and the basking spot can safely drop to around 22 degrees Celsius at night. As with all pets, Water should be provided at the cool end and refreshed daily. Substrate can be a wide range of choices from lignocell, aspen, beech, obios, desert blend, corn cob bedding or one of the particulate mixes available on the market, potentially with some extra core or topsoil mixed through it to add body to that substrate. Whilst this animal is at home in drier habitats and the vivarium will not need spraying per se, it would be worth considering a damp hide being present towards the warm end to ensure that no issues occur with shedding. Lighting, if required, will be provided by low output UV tube or a full spectrum LED strip. A 2% T8 tube or the 7% shade dweller T5 will suffice. More and more keepers are opting for this kind of lighting on their snakes. This snake is a capable climber and it's got the standardized sort of bread bin shape with the sort of hard edge to their ventral scale. So they're very, very adept climbers and some climbing opportunities should be provided in the tank along with plenty of cover to bolster that psychological security that this species would benefit from. This is a perfectly suitable snake for the beginner, as long as the caveats to their care are heeded. Certain keepers may view them as a slightly more specialised, and slightly is the term that we need to use here. This is not a difficult snake to keep. Quite possibly the most attractive of the North American rat snakes, possibly only challenged by the Mexican locality bear rat snakes, Pantherophis bear die, uh, for just outstanding beauty.
the only other species of the Bogotophis uh, genus is Bogotophis rosalie, uh, which is far rarer in captivity, certainly in the UK, and is a bit of a halo species for certain collectors who would give their left leg for the opportunity to have one. So we'll turn around and have a look at the distribution and the climate data now and see how it behaves. So as always, we try and find uh, a relatively definitive distribution map and in this case this was from the ICUN red list showing the distribution in southern New Mexico, uh, southwestern uh, and central western Texas, down through the center of northern Mexico and running through the various states. This only gives a rough picture though and there isn't a huge amount of top topography present there so we also then printed out the topography of this map which shows quite clearly that we have the Sierra Madre Occidentalis and the Sierra Madre Orientalis and within that a basin which is where this snake occupies and these are this this area is made up of alluvial soils and sands which would have come down from the mountains over millennia uh, and they're populated by primarily cactus and scrubland um, we've also got various uh, pockets of mountainous regions which goes some to explain the, v the variety in elevation that this animal has adapted to but they stay within the Sierra Madres up towards Texas they spread out slightly more almost towards San Antonio in the east and El Paso in the north uh, we've then taken five different localities to be able to look at daytime high and nighttime low for their climate data these include El Paso, Texas, Chihuahua, Chihuahua, Torreon, Coahuila, Sotillo, Coahuya, and Monterey, Nuevo León. My pronunciation is terrible, but hopefully you can bear with it. What we've done is transcribe the daytime high average and nighttime low average into this graph over the course of the year to show what's going on. And we've got these regions which show where we're pretty much going to be hard brumating, and that could be three or four months in certain regions. Bear in mind, this is the average. Certain more northern regions seem to have far cooler goes of it. So such as El Paso, Texas, December and January, nighttime low average is down to zero. Whereas in Monterey, Nuevo Leon, 10 is their minimum. So there is some variability. So the animals to the north undoubtedly would have to have a pretty hard brumation to make sure that they uh, they stay safe. Whereas um, the, the southern locales potentially would still be able to be active but for minimal hours uh, and they would potentially become diurnal at this period to try and make the most of the heat that's available and keep those heating those hunting opportunities going peak temperatures on average reach 35 degrees celsius in june so this is an early peak not a lot of the other stuff they're peaking sort of august but what happens is it does not deteriorate super quick and even in October, we're still hitting averages of 28 degrees Celsius, which is far more clement than a lot of places, which is illustrating that late decline in temperature, which makes them run that two or three months behind the other North American rat snakes. So we'll try and print these data off and we'll make sure that you've got a copy of them if we can uh, and put them onto the, the website. Certainly on Facebook, it's slightly more complex on YouTube. Uh, We'll keep the videos coming. This is a challenging time. We will keep the videos flowing as much as we can and just try and keep people entertained. These next few months are going to be challenging for us all. Stay safe out there. We love you all. Peace.